Blog Talk Radio. everyone around our beloved planet. Welcome to Dr. Catherine May's blog talk radio program, Healing for Ascension. Today is Sunday, August 3rd, 2014. And today's Healing for Ascension call is with Sananda, Training for Ascension. And we've had a request from one of our beloved listeners to revisit our friends, the Arcturians, up in their ship, which is positioned above the North Pole. Of course, they have many ships around our planet, but the one we always visit is above the North Pole. So they have lovingly invited us up there today. This is Meg, your co-host, and I'm very happy to say I'm calling in from Catherine's beautiful home in High Falls, New York, where we are on day one of our beautiful retreat up in the mountains of High Falls, New York. And I'm surrounded by smiling faces, some blissed out, rocking their heads, some smiling and giggling. It's just a beautiful place, beautiful sunny area. And we've had our first day of visual centering training, so we are high as a kite and ready for our trip up with the Arcturians. And Catherine is sitting across from us, ready to welcome us and Lead us in our journey up to the ships. Hi, Catherine. It's so nice to say hi and be right across from your beautiful face. Hi, Meg. Now, we're in the same room today for the first time to do the show. So we, we may. Now oh, you're on. Oh, yeah, I'm on. <laughs> Let me bring on my beloved co-host and make sure she loves us not muted. We may have well, the problem with feedback because we're sitting across the room from each other and there's a delay on the computer. So if you hear two versions of us talking, somebody um, put up their hand and let us know. <laughs> Actually, this is what we're going to do next time. I haven't told Meg this yet. We're going to op- open the chat room for our calls in the future. She says, good, okay. <laughs> um if they can hear interference or if something is sounding strange on the line. I think we have a clear sound. Um, I think you should all be able to hear us, both of us, without feedback or delays or strange sounds. So make sure they get out of the room. <laughs> Uh-huh. You see a little window there? My little iPad is thinking very hard about this, so it'll get back to us. <laughs> it's working hard to see if we can open up the world to this. <laughs> All right. 
So we have a very exciting time today. Um, we've had eight requests from people who want to have a special healing for themselves or for loved ones. <clears throat> and there is such a large range here of all different kinds of requests. So this will give us the opportunity to um, concentrate on many different kinds of healing. And we also have our all our group members here, and they are going to add their energy to the whole healing process as well. So when we go up to the for so those of you who are new, who are new haven't um, experienced this, it's been um, several weeks since we've done this, but Sanan is going to be with us. We're going to call in the Arcturians. Well, they're already waiting for us. Um, we will go there to the beautiful healing arena and where healers are invited to go and join us in the arena. And we call in everyone who wants to be um, have a special healing. They, you just nominate yourself and you can go along with the people who have written to us and asked for special healing. So I'm going to read through the names that of those we have. And I think a lot of you may uh, find something in here that re- relates to you or to, to a loved one. And you can send the energy of your loved one to the ships as well, and they will feel it. They'll feel our prayers. They'll feel our wishes and um, experience something really nice from having this healing, even if they don't know that it's happening. So the first one is um, Lydia martinez Cava. She's from Madrid. And Lydia, we're going to help you be done with this. She says the problem is stuttering, although slight. um, But for that reason, she suffered from depression and anxiety, and for 25 years she took antidepressants. I think that means that she must be awesome, and that's a good thing. But she says she can't have satisfying relationships, and she really wants to. She's 43. Um, Born on December 6, 1970. Well, it's time to be done with this. She sends a big hug, too. Isn't that just like light workers? They ask for a healing, and they send you a hug. (laughs) <laughs> That's how it's done. <laughs> All right, we're I'm going to talk about that a little bit because Lydia gives us an opportunity to talk about depression and anxiety. So that's going to be part of what we'll talk about today. The next one is Diane, who lives in Portugal. Um, she's 38. About five years ago, Uh, She discovered a large fibroid tumor in her uterus, and she was told to have it removed um, with a high risk of having to have a total hysterectomy. So it never occurred to her to go through with it because deep inside she knew she could cure this herself. So it's five years later, and she's still working on it, and Diane, we're going to help you turn the corner. And be done with this once and for all. And then you will hear your surgeon say, oh, my gosh, what happened? This is a miracle. (laughs) And we should have done that surgery because now we can't do surgery on you anymore. (laughs) I have heard that happen, by the way. Um, Okay, Doris Covert is basically healthy. She's 78 and she still works two days a week and she's busy. Um, she's lost her, a large percentage of her hearing because of the flu. Um, and she had a mini stroke 18 months ago. She came through it very well and quickly. Here's somebody with a lot of spirit. Good for you, Doris. And now she wants um, just some numbness in her lips on the left side. And apparently she's lost the taste of food, so it's not so interesting anymore. She's even stopped planning her death and funeral plans because now she's going to ascend. She said, I am 
going to ascend. All right, Doris. So let's give her a boost. So Doris has a sister named Noreen Benson who has Alzheimer's. She's lost most of her memory and her ability to do things. She can walk. She's still fairly healthy and she can feed herself. Well, good. She can always speak a few words um, before her brain and her voice can't make a connection. Now, recently we heard about... I want to put Meg on for a moment and have her talk about Alzheimer's and some of the very simple new um, suggestions. Yeah. So, Doris? Listen up. So, the Western medical community has named Alzheimer's and probably dementia, too, as type 3 diabetes. So, what that means is that the brain cells are now refusing to uptake the glucose necessary for them to make the neural synaptic connections within the brain to be able to recall most sensory information, past memory, even basic skills. There was a very courageous doctor whose husband developed Alzheimer's and made it her life's work to understand this condition and help her husband. She pulled him off all Western medicines and did all natural remedies, including herbs and nutrition, changed his diet, took all the sugar out of his diet, basically vegetables, juicing, fruit, some healthy nuts and seeds. But the one thing she found that made the biggest difference was introducing raw organic coconut oil into his diet. And what she found is by giving him three tablespoons of raw coconut oil a day, in six weeks, he was able to return to some semi-cooking in the kitchen. And this is a man that could not even draw a clock on a sheet of paper six weeks earlier. So coconut oil has a particular characteristic of containing medium-chain fatty acids, which can be converted into energy almost as fast as glucose can, but it also carries the heavier caloric value that allows it to be longer sustaining than glucose. So it doesn't interfere with the diabetes that is almost surely present when anyone has Alzheimer's or diabetes or um, dementia. So if you're out there listening and you have um, experiencing some loss of memory, some dementia, some um, problems with recall, Go find at your health food store, or you can order it online, some raw organic coconut oil. And begin taking three tablespoons a day. It doesn't matter whether it's right out of the spoon, which is delicious, or added it to your cooking. Or if you have a member of your family that has this and is no longer able to make choices for themselves, you can add this to their diet. And I don't care whether they're in a nursing home or not. You're in charge of this, and you can tell them to have this added to their diet. And in a very short time, as quick as this doctor did, you're going to see some changes happening where they're going to be able to make some more recall of their loved ones, able to do basic functioning skills, bathroom, getting around, self-care, and you might even get a couple of really big smiles on their faces and a longer levels of connections. Um, and that problem is not theirs anymore, and then they can choose to live as long as they want with the brain function that they can and just always pay attention to their diet to make sure that the sugar is out of their diet completely and that they have a very nutritious vegetarian diet if possible and start to see this problem turn around. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Meg. Bravo. Now, this is why we have Meg here, because she has this encyclopedic knowledge of alternative medicine, and that one is a powerful treatment and so easy, so easy to do to help someone you love. So, Doris, put yourself on it as well, and you're going to see, I bet you it'll even help you with the hearing problems. Okay, so she has another sister named Jana who has advanced MS. 
and absolutely the same treatment for MS. Eliminate all sugar. And, you know, this is harder to do than we think, especially if someone is under treatment, because almost everything they're fed in a hospital contains sugar. It is the worst possible diet for someone who's sick. So she can't walk even, uh, the sister can't walk even with the walker, but she has a scooter. Um, Her legs don't get the message from her brain. So... And this is also a brain circuit problem. Try, all three of you are going to be on this diet with um, organic raw coconut oil. Okay. Russell Levine has a, a severe case of chronic Lyme disease. Russell, I know how that works. Um... I have a few suggestions that came from Father God. There is, um, we recommended this once before. It's a um, plum from Hawaii, and I have one in the cupboard, so I will get it and give you the name in a few minutes um, at the end of the show. Um, They're red. Salted plums, and if you, even if you Google red salted, if you Google salted plums from Hawaii, um, we'll get the name for you shortly. And that's one of the treatments to eat those. Another one, they're horrible because they're so salty. So you drink water with them. Um, you might even be able to soak them in a little water before you eat them to get some of the salt off. And then, um, in addition to that, Japanese knotweed. I have a little story to tell. I noticed Japanese knotweed around my house. And I started digging it up and making and roasting it, made tea with it. It's a very powerful um, antidote to Lyme disease. I also have a place in in Canada that's about um, seven or eight hours drive from here, north, straight north. And in here, (laughs) EJ has the plums that she found in my cupboard. Bravo, EJ. Thank you. It's called Li Hing Mui. L-I-H-I-N-G-M-U-I. Li Hing Mui. (laughs) <laughs> they are from Hawaii, and somehow they are a really good treatment for Lyme disease. So we have Li Hing Mui, um, Japanese knotweed, which you can get as an elixir from any good health food store. Um, and the third thing is pumpkin seeds. And I want to add to that coconut oil. Now, I live in an area that is just overrun by ticks, but I've never had a problem since I started raising the vibration. I pulled the ticks off, never had a, never got the sickness. It just doesn't affect you once you get your vibration high enough. But in the meantime, if you've already had it, they they tend to hide in, you know, the secret places in your body. So... All of these treatments together, in addition to raising your vibration, and you will never again have to say you have severe chronic Lyme disease. Make up your mind. There is no such thing. Russell. And doctors will tell you, oh, it's so permanent. You'll never get over it. It's, you know, it's in your system forever. Nonsense. You can get over it. Okay. Um, because we can get over any bacterial or viral disease. There's no such thing as one you can't get rid of. Okay, so here's Kay requesting for her daughter Elizabeth and her husband Dean. Elizabeth has an autoimmune condition that doctors have been unable to diagnose. 
Her feet and lower legs are numb with nerve damage. Dean has inoperable lung cancer, has had chemo and radiation, and are waiting until August 11th to hear the results. They have three children and would be so thankful if we could include them in the next healing. Okay, we will do so. Um, Marlene, for her mother, Geraldine. Her mother has cancer spots on her lungs and on her skin, and her skin is very thin. Marlene is here. Marlene, how old is your mom? 89, yeah. She has a lot of difficulty breathing. Has very high blood pressure. That's one of the reactions, isn't it, when your body is under great stress, trying to fight off an illness. She's had three operations related to cancer. Her throat, vocal cord nodules, and a cancer skin was removed. Four out of five brothers died from cancer. Family skill. It is not. I mean, this is what we mean by genetic. You learn it from your family. In particular, uh, you know, the psychological establishment is, is beginning to understand that cancer all comes a particular personality configuration, um, which includes anxiety, um, lack of self-esteem, which expresses itself as not having faith in yourself, not feeling good enough, not feeling worthy. And the common result of that, of course, is anger. So if you believe that you were born defective, what other reaction is there but to feel angry and to feel angry at God? And aspiration is always there with cancer. The sense of being abandoned or feeling um, not good enough and, and you were born this way and now you're saddled with this deficit or defect or mysterious thing that's wrong with you that maybe you don't even know what it is. And then you feel stupid because you can't even figure out what's wrong with you. So it's a it's like a vortex of bad feelings, um, uh, a feeling of not not loving yourself. So <clears throat> we're going to approach all of these things we're going to do a meditation. Now, let's hear, if anyone wants to tell us, do you hear any feedback on the line? Is there anybody there on the chat room? It didn't open. Okay. All right. But you don't, feel any, you don't hear any feedback on the line. All right. I hope that's working. We have both our lines open. Um are you on the line mm-hmm. now? Yes. Okay, Meg. And I'll bring in one more um, request, although this was nonverbal but heartfelt. Was we are staying at a, um, like I said, at Catherine's beautiful home, and she has a friend here who shares space with her, who has a dog named Greta. And Greta was limping this morning, beautiful border collie, just full of life, and she was limping this morning and just leaned up on all of us for some TLC. And she asked us all to include her in this today. So I'm going to invite everybody who's listening to this or the archives and has a beloved furry friend or feathered friend or um, finned friend who is uh, experiencing any symptom that they would like not to, to just pull them in and bring them in with you in your arms or by your feet. And just, you know, the Arcturians have a... Oh, as Che just jumps into Catherine's lap going, me too, (laughs) bring me, I'll lead all the animals there, because Che's been there many times. And, you know, in the Arcturian ship, they have a special room just for the animals. And when the animals, when we all go up together, the animals just peel off, they know where to go, and they go in a special room, and, and they have special Arcturians that are, or the Arcturians that particularly love to work with animals that will give them special TLC, and Sananda visits them as well as all of us in the big room. So let's pull in all of our animals and, and uh, let's include them in the, today's work. And let's include all the animals on the earth. 
too. We're going to send them a big love blast as well. All right, so those of you who haven't been with us before, here's how it works. We're going to do a meditation. We're going to envision ourselves all together in a group, all in a big circle. Those of you who wish to can join hands, and we're going to picture ourselves inside the pillar of light and we're creating a pillar of light for everybody. And the pillar of light covers the whole, everybody who's on the globe and wants to get in it along. So we're all going to join in the pillar of light. We're going to lift off, and you'll feel yourself very light. Feel yourself just rising. You're getting lighter and lighter. Big breath. Settle back and breathe right into the center of your brain where you feel light coming in. Where you feel lighthearted and where you can absorb the feeling of light that just pours down on us in this in this pillar of light that connects us to the Australian ship from there beyond to the great central sun, which is source, um, the great spirit, whatever you, however you think of. Prime creator, our, our great creator, who sends us love and blessings and energy and a feeling of acceptance and just really adores us and sends us this constant stream of love, but you notice it increased in the last few months or so. Um, we're getting a call coming through from Gabriella, and I wonder if he's trying to fill up. Okay, okay Gabriella, if you um, if you want to. Just send us a message. Call call on Michael's phone and he will answer it. And he'll get the message to us. Oh, we have to find his phone. All right, I know Gabriella has his line. So we're all here. Gabriella, if you want to give us feedback about what you're hearing, um, call Michael. Oh, let's just give it a second while the phone charges you know, comes back online. Um, this is helpful. Gabrielle is, is at the park with Noev because Noev is so full of energy. I think I should tell the story. While we're, while we're all in the pillar of light, everybody's relaxing. We were doing visual centering this morning in the group, and Noev was here keeping us company and listening, and... After we were getting toward the end of our morning session, and Noah came over and said, can I ask you a question? And I said, sure. And she said, can I go next? Can I have a turn? And I said, absolutely. So she got in the big chair, and she proceeded to give us a demonstration of what it's like when you really allow the love and the powerful energy to pour down and she was spinning in the chair and giggling and saying, it tickles, it tickles, and she was just jumping she, with joy and laughing. And this is such a lesson for all of us. Parents, elders, all, our first reaction is supposed to be, settle down, you know, don't laugh so loud, don't make a fuss. And in a normal school, a regular school, she would be called hyperactive and put on Ritalin because she laughed so much. (laughs) And she was just tickled, tickled, tickled. And she kept just shrieking and being so thrilled and happy because she was being tickled to death. (laughs) Okay. 
So are we all right? Which line? All right, we can trade phones. So if it's not coming in clearly. Does it affect does it affect the reception if I have the volume turned down? No, it doesn't. Okay. Well, we can trade phones so that I'll use... Oh, all right. We're waiting for a response. So Gabrielle is giving us feedback. All right. I can always trade phones, so I'll be on the landline. That's probably a better idea. All right. I think that's all we need to do. And then Meg just has to remember that she has a different phone than the one that... All right, let's try this. Now, am I on? I'm off mute, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Meg can keep this, <laughs> keep track of this. <laughs> All right, so you probably you want that one to be on mute, right? Okay. Now let's see if this is better. Um, so Meg has a panel where she has to remember which number goes to which phone and who's on <laughs> which time. All right, so hopefully that'll be better. So anyway, we had a lesson about when you open your crown chakra and your heart and every pore in your body all at the same time, you will just be overwhelmed with the giggles. And it will tickle. And this is not, she's she's told us this before, that she just feels like she's being tickled all the time. (laughs) Okay, so we're in our pillar of light. Hopefully everybody's feeling the tickles and the fun energy that um, Creator is sending down. Sunanda's up on the ship waiting for us with the Arcturians, and they're sending their blessings and their light energy down through the pillar welcoming us. So breathe it in and let yourself just float. Let yourself just rise gently. Feel yourself being lifted. And all of you who want to go for healing treatment, come on along. And all the healers, the Reiki masters, of which there are many, in our group and on the line, come with us, energy healers of all sorts, psychic mediums, all of you, come on along. Now, we're floating up to the main entrance. The portal opens. And let's us come into the big entry way, and there's room for all of us, thousands. So let's all float right up, take your place. We can all stay in a circle. And now there's a group of Arcturians who are here with us, and Sananda's here. He's greeting everybody. He's just sending out his light blast and big hug for everyone. Hi, Sananda. He just said, hello, dear ones. Now they're going to close the door to the portal and open the beautiful archway into the healing arena beautiful brightly lighted warm comfortable place we're going to walk in and we'll ask um, anyone who wants to can lead a group in we have um, Lydia I want you Lydia to bring all the people who have any psychological difficulties that they'd like to heal. And Diane, um, 
any like tumors or any growth that might be a problem. Now what you do is you're going to just walk into the arena and then I'll read off all the various, you know, areas that people can go. It's like a big clock. There are comfortable they're like chairs, like a a nice easy chair that you can lean back in. It's not a hospital bed. It's a warm and comfortable place. So let me just check and see if our sound is all right. Did you not hear back from Gabriella? All right. So they were they're saying the sound hasn't been too good, but all right, maybe this will work. We're we're getting further apart. Um so here's Doris who has had hearing problems. So why don't we have Doris and bring in everybody who has hearing or vision problems. And you just file around the circle, find a place in the circle, and we'll have a group for um, MS and other autoimmune diseases. We'll have a group for Alzheimer's and other um, age-related problems. We'll have a group for uh, Lyme disease and other bacterial and viral problems. We'll have um, cancer. We also need a group for cancer, diabetes, um, And anyone else who has an issue they want to heal, bones and joints, pain problems, all of you file in, and if you want to go together as a group, you'll have a support group with you to help you heal. Okay. Now, the healers, Take your place around the outside of the arena, around the around the circle, and you can go if you have a specialty. You can go to a the group that you are especially good with healing, or if you have a family member you want to bring in. There are unlimited um, lounge chairs. Unlimited healing beds for everyone. And the Arcturians are here. And each person who comes to ask for healing will have a group of Arcturians, three or four for each of you, who will help. And what they're doing now is they're doing a scan to... It's like a diagnostic scan. They'll read your whole body with their scan. I, it looks to me like what the printer does when it reads to copy. So they're making um, a scan of your body. And when they do that, they can see everything. Any little shadow of, of an inflammation or infection or a disease things you don't even know about. And they will arrange their technology and their team to deal with whatever the problems are. You can talk with them. You can talk out loud if you want, but you don't have to. They can communicate telepathically. And they are so loving and so attentive They love doing this work because they really want to help us. They want to help us with our ascension and they want to help us to be healthy and strong and feeling good and positive. And they know that this work that they do helps people to feel closer to them and helps and thereby helps people to ascend as they have done. 
So we're not alone in this, and we're not the first ones. There have been other cultures, other planets, where the beings who are very similar to us, they're not identical to us, but they're very similar, and understand our human um, makeup, our psychological, intellectual, physical makeup. And they want to help us. And just by being with them, just by experiencing these healing sessions, you can feel it's as if the whole universe wants to help lift us up. There are so many who are trying to help us. And they do it the way the universe does it, which is to send us love and to help us to heal and to help us have faith and to expand and grow. And by experiencing the presence of these loving and gentle people, we can learn to be more like them. And this is what Sananda teaches, too. And as you have all come in and taken your place, having the scan with your Arcturian team, um, excuse me. Okay. So when anyone, everyone has their scan, everyone gets set in their place. You are being cared for. And now Sananda is going to go around the circle and he will stop at every single bed and he will place his hands beside your head. You'll feel the warmth and the love that comes through his hands. It is so powerful. And in the center of the circle, the other masters have come to help. Mother and Father God are here. St. Germain. Archangel Michael, Raphael, and all the twin flames, all the, oh, everyone who wants to come is welcome. And if you have a um, a master or an archangel a special connection, invite them to come. They will all come and help out. And now we have something that's like they create a vortex. So Sananda goes around the outside of the circle to be at the head of each person. The other masters and angels are in the center and the um, healers with us, those of us who are still in human bodies, around the outside of the circle and it creates this amazing, um, how can I describe it? It's like the Mother, Father, God, St. Germain and the others send out a blast of loving energy to each person. They go around the group to each person and then the healers around the outside literally Feel the energy, absorb it, and send it back. So it creates this, like back and forth, like a in waves. So just waves of healing energy and love passing over every person, and back and forth from the healers to our masters in spirit. And so they're feeling it too. The the healers are also feeling this tremendous wave of energy that flows back and forth up and down from the to- from your toes to your head and back again so every person is receiving this energy bath that is so powerful 
And meanwhile, the Arcturians are doing their magic. They calibrate their healing wands. So while you're getting a full body massage, what it feels like, of this powerful healing energy, the Arcturians have calibrated their wands from the scan that they did. And you know you've probably heard of the technologies that are beginning to be developed on our on the surface of our planet. They're not popular, of course, with mainstream medicine, but the ones that can calibrate a sound or light or sound and light uh, beam and direct it toward where the problem is. It's a bit like laser surgery, but it's not um, dangerous and it's not as invasive because it's calibrated exactly to the energy signature of the disease cell, for instance. So if it's a breast cancer cell, it has a particular signature. And they calibrate their wand to the opposite of that signature. So if it's a plus, they do the minus. That is exactly the opposite of that signature. And it nullifies the cell. It doesn't just kill it. It completely eliminates it because it can no longer survive in that energy. And their wands can do that. They will pinpoint for my lens mother. It will go after the very pocket of disease that's causing the problem. And their wand will aim right at the cancer cells and eliminate them. And it preserves all the healthy cells because their scan identifies your personal signature, your healthy cells. And it will boost the healthy cells at the same time it's eliminating the diseased cells. And the love energy is doing that same process. It boosts every cell in your body. Every system in your body is being tuned and balanced. Breathe it in. Mm -hmm. And let yourself just feel the energy wash over you. delicious. Now Sananda's working his way around. And I'm going to join Sananda. I'll come right after him. And as he sends he sends this big blast of healing energy and love. And then I come after him to help integrate it, to help you maintain it and Continue to feel it in a gentle way to process, integrate, absorb. Open your breathing, open your channels, open your heart and your mind. And you can absorb every little glimmer, every sparkle. And you will feel tickled inside and out. So feel the the waves are continuing. It's like the feeling is like you're right on the edge of the shore in a warm ocean, just resting on the sand and the Feel the waves just washing over you, lift you a little bit and then recede and then wash over you and lift you a little bit and then recede like you're being rocked. 
and cleansed and comforted and healed. Now, anyone who has felt anxiety, as Lydia described, first of all, Lydia, who cares if you stutter or not? Nobody else thinks it's a problem. You're the one who thinks it's a problem. So you're tormenting yourself over it, and that makes it worse. That's what anxiety is. It's just torturing yourself. It's simple. It's not easy to stop, but it's simple. It is always a combination of self-doubt and really self-hatred. And as long as you're hating yourself and feeling bad about yourself, of course you can't have good relationships because that feeling will pervade anything you try to do. It'll just get in the way because you're thinking about yourself and how much you can't stand yourself. You can't let anybody else in because they might disagree with you. Then what would you do? You'd have to accept yourself. You'd have to love yourself. Well, here's your chance. As you rest comfortably, lean back. And those of you who say, I am an anxious person, look at that statement and revise it. There is no such thing as an anxious person. It's not a part of your identity. It's not a part of who you are. It's just something you do. And you can decide to not do it anymore. It's generating negative thoughts. And then feeling the response to those negative thoughts. So the cure? Eliminate the negative thoughts. And the anxiety itself will disappear because it was a thought form. It has no substance. It takes up no space. It isn't a thing. It's just a thought form. It's just something you learned. We learn it by being around other people who are anxious. We absorb it. We take it in. We gobble it up and swallow it whole. And then we think that that's what life is. And then we develop our responses to it. Well, stuttering could be something that began with a developmental, uh, maybe a slight issue where your brain was reorganizing and developing. Maybe you were becoming an artist. Maybe you were becoming a musician. Maybe your creative powers were developing and they, for a while, took precedence over language. But that doesn't remain. What remains is the memory and the feelings. And then we grow up. And whatever the issue was, whatever the misconception was about yourself, it sticks and it becomes a part of the foundation that we build and shore up and use and assume is true. But there is no such thing as someone who is defective. There is no such thing as someone who isn't good enough. It's not that you have to earn the love from God, it's that you have to learn to accept it because it's always there for you. As you can feel in this bright, happy room, the Arcturians are lovely to watch and the Masters too. They love what they're doing. They're not all serious and grim. They're laughing and, you know, they do these little gestures and dances and 
smiles and happy energy feelings that are like high fiving and and having a wonderful time. They love doing this. And they want you to laugh with them too. Life can be pretty silly. And we take it so seriously. But the fact is, all of us are here again, doing this work, living this life, learning what we can. But we're really here to learn to love. That's it. It doesn't matter what your career is. It doesn't matter how much money you made. In the end, what matters is, did you learn to love yourself? And then by extension, did you learn to love Creator? Or God, whatever you wish to call it. If you don't love yourself, you can't truly have faith. Because, of course, this is the way you were created. If you don't like the way you were created, then you're having an argument with God. God, I don't like the way you made me. It's not good enough. And God responds always, But dear, this is what you wanted, to experience something different in this lifetime. We work together to do this perfectly. You are perfection. You are perfection in my eyes. Why can't you see that? Why can't you see what I see? You are perfection, and we love you endlessly, without conditions. It's very hard for us to understand, isn't it? It's very hard for us to accept, but it's simply the fact The universe runs on love. That is the energy. Beyond the boundaries of this planet Earth where we established time and space and duality, there is nothing but love. Now it's our job to climb out of this pit that we designed for our boot camp And now, change it over. Because, of course, we change it over with our feelings by creating it. When you create the sensation, the feeling, the knowledge between you and yourself that you are in love with life and with this body you have and with this experience you're having now. Tough, yes sometimes nearly impossible. But was it worth it? Absolutely. Because in the end, what we learn is love. What could be better than that? Love, faith, compassion. Joy. But you cannot feel joy until you love yourself. And when you absorb this wonderful atmosphere around us, this bright, high-level energy that we're experiencing, when you can absorb that, there will be no more disease in your life. And there will be no more self-doubt. And no more arguments with life. No more battles with God. Because we're partners. We were born into this partnership. With God. With our higher selves with those
those around us who came to live this life with us? Yes, even the ones you can't stand, even the ones who seem so awful to you, they're part of it too. We're all living out this role that we came to play. And when we all ascend together, we are going to have an enormous celebration. The biggest party the universe has ever seen. (laughs) St. Germain's doing a little dance for us. And Mother, Father, God are dancing as well. Of course, they're listening and part of this. Sananda's three quarters of the way around the group now. And he'll say a few words to us before we leave. But right now he's focusing very intently on the people who are there in the circle. And you'll feel it when he comes. People have told me this. They could tell when Sananda came around to them because they felt it. Big waves of love just pouring over them. And it only takes a few seconds to feel it and to really absorb it. Golden white light. And then afterwards, the Arcturians. We're not quite ready yet, but soon the Arcturians are going to bring in the blue light, the blue cleansing light, because this energy we're feeling now is really high, intense, high vibration. And we need to absorb it. We need to be able to cleanse and wash away all the old stuff stuff. So know that that's what's happening as well. When you raise your vibration, you're healing whatever is in your body, even if what it is is the battle between you and your body. The battle between you and who you think you are. And that battle, of course, if you're having one, is just because you misunderstood just because you have a misconception about who you really are. Who you really are is the soul that designed this life, that agreed to come here and take on this particular body, was not forced upon you. You agreed to it. You chose it. You may not remember it, but of course, there was a time when you said, yep, okay, bring it on, I'm ready. I know what I have to learn in this life is patience. I'm going to practice that. Or I know what I need to learn in this life is forgiveness. I'm going to work on that. Well, how do you work on forgiveness other than by having somebody do horrible things to you. And now you're in a position where you have to learn to manage it. You have to first learn to recover. And once you have recovered, by acknowledging, yes, you you chose this game, you signed up for this, now you're working your way out of it, and you are triumphant. Because you took on this difficult project and you are succeeding at maintaining the connection to your heart. And if you've done that, you have triumphed. And from there, it's just a matter of relearning, recalibrating, opening your channels, and learning to accept the love. Now, Sananda is finishing his round of the whole, like a clock. He goes clockwise around the group. 
and I really enjoy working with Sananda and coming around with him. And when I do healing groups in person, he always comes, and he comes. His energy comes through my hands, and people can feel that the powerful energy that we can channel. And, of course, what Sananda channels, well, I'll let him t- describe it to you. He's saying, yes, he'll come over. Okay, let's ask Sananda to describe how he does this healing and why it feels so powerful and so effective and how he has been able, even when he was here in a body, to help people to heal. Okay, I'll turn this over to Sananda. He can tell you. Greetings, everyone. I'm delighted to tell you how. It's very simple, really. I have always been a healer. I've always loved seeing people come to the light, seeing people realize their own strengths. That's really what I'm doing. And the reason what I bring through is powerful is because I'm bringing through the energy of Creator. This is not something that only I can do. It's just something I learned how to do over many, many lifetimes. I bring the energy of Creator. I accept it without question. I know it is who I am. And when I am healing, I am creator. I am simply bringing the energy, the power, and the love from creator and allowing it to flow through me to you. So what you feel is not Sananda. Or not Sananda alone. What you feel is creator. And this is why you can learn to do this as well. You can learn to do it for yourself. And you can learn to do it with others. It's a matter of opening your channels. Feeling the energy pour through you. And you too will feel the healing energy and the power. We have a dog barking here who must have missed her appointment. (laughs) Or else she's responding to her her treatment in the with the animals. Okay, so now to continue. Well, it's very simple, isn't it? I've just given you rule number one and lesson number 10,000. It's all the same. Allow the energy of Creator to flow through you. And there will never again be a moment when you feel overwhelmed by anxiety There will be no depression. There will be no disease. When you accept, I am God, I am light, I am love, then you are. And love is light. Love does not permit disease. Love does not even know what disease is because that is of the dark. So everyone who has experienced illness, turn, turn your eyes from the illness you've experienced toward the light.
and the disease cannot sustain itself. Now, the Arcturians bring their beautiful, healing, cleansing blue light. Let it wash over you. Feel it just soothing and cleansing and cooling. Like a beautiful shower washing away all the old residue. All the old memories, the pain, the anxiety, the darkness, all of it. Let it wash away down the drain and the universe will take care of it. Recycle it into flowers and (laughs) laughter. That's it. Breathe it in. Feel yourself brand new, sparkling clean, energized, and healthy. Bask in that feeling. And know that you only need to ask us to be there with you And you will feel our presence. We're always there waiting for you to ask. Call on your angels. Call on your guardians. Call on the masters you love. Call on your ancestors. Anyone you think would be helpful. We're all here to help you. Know that you are never alone because we are one. You have all the abilities, all the wisdom in your soul that I have. We are one. Now, beloved ones, the Arturians are finished with their treatment Raise yourself up from this lovely lounge where you've been reclining. Jump up out of your bed and do a jig with us. Those of you who had trouble walking, feel the sensations coming back. Feel the energy coursing through your veins through your nervous system, your whole body alive. That stance, that condition, that arrangement, your whole body feeling alive and tickled with the energy of spirit, that is healing That is all you need. And now, let me accompany you as we move out. Hug your friends. Feel the embrace of our beloved healers. Those who come in a body, those who are here in their light bodies. It's the same. We can embrace. You can feel our hug. You can. Because we know what it feels like to be in a body. And we can organize our energy to touch you so that you will feel our bodies. You will feel the energy of our arms around you. Yes. Just as you feel the hug from the person next to you.
take that feeling with you, dear ones. Now we gather all the animals. We send our love. We're going to send, with the Arcturians, we're going to send a big blast of energy downward to the grid. So all together, I'm going to count from three down to one, and when I do, we're all going to send a big love blast to the grid that surrounds the planet. Three, two, one. Blast. (laughs) That's it. We're sending it down first to the human grid, and then that sparks the connections to all the other grids, all the networks that surround the planet with light energy and love. Now see it like lightning traveling around the globe, igniting all the other grids, even the RV grid, the one that's going to release all the dark energy that was connected to money and replace it with light so that all Money will carry with it the feeling. Well, it's more than a feeling, isn't it? The knowing that this is to be used for the greater good. Yes, feel that connection. You, beloved ones, are creating the new world, by doing this. See it sparkling all around the globe. Now you can do this, even after you go back to your homes, you can do this. Keep this energy flowing. And together, we will bring on Nasara, the complete revolution that will create new systems, new ways of governance, new a new feeling about what people can do together. And along with it, the medium of exchange that will still be used for a while and then will no longer be necessary at all. And make sure, as this little one is reminding us, make sure you send your loving energy to the animals as well. And now we all gather. The great door is open and we will go back out to the the entryway. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't yet absorbed all the love. They still think that they're enemies. But it's playful. They still think chasing and threatening is an, a good idea. Well, there are still a few on the planet who believe that. But these two little ones only chase and and bark and hiss. But they never, never hurt each other. They wouldn't think of it. It's like a game to them. As it has been for all of you. It was only a game. A deadly one, a terrible one, a dark one, but only a game. And you can change the rules of the game any time you want. You can also refuse to play the game. In your own way, this is what you're doing. Now, here we are. We're going back to the light chamber, the light pillar of light. We'll all go in our circle, take hands, 
Put your arms around the waist of the person next to you. Give everybody hugs. And then we're going to float down. Ease our way down. Gently. So that you keep the healing energy and the love and the light with you. As you go back. To your room, your chair. But it's different now. It's a different room than it was before you left. It's now filled with light. And so I embrace you all for now. I say for farewell and namaste to all of you beloved ones. Go forward in health and in love. I am your Sananda. Open your eyes and find yourself back in your your chairs. Open your eyes slowly and notice that there are more dimensions that you can see. More levels of light. more frequencies that you can register with your own vision. More depth. More depth than what you're used to thinking of as three-dimensional. The colors are different. The depths are deeper. The light is brighter. The color is more intense. Notice everything around you is alive. Look out the windows. See the trees, the flowers. Or if you're in the southern hemisphere, the winter time, notice. Everything is alive. Breathing. Everything is breathing. Feel the earth's heartbeat. Feel each other's hearts beating. into my body. (laughs) That's creator. So, (coughs) here we are back in our room. Everyone feeling great? Smiles all around? (laughs) That was fun. That was quite a trip. And so, do we still have our dear Meg on the line? She went outside so that she could, so that her um, connection would not interfere. Hi, Catherine. Yes, I'm here. Hi there, Meg. She's Thank sitting you. What out. A beautiful, beautiful trip. I'm sitting out here in 
on the grass with your other beloved animal friend, and <laughs> Michael's out here with me, and we're just sitting out here in beautiful bliss, and thank the Arcturians and our masters for that wonderful trip, and all the healers from around the world <laughs> were here yes. with me, and we'll listen to this on the archives, and all our beloved healers that are here with us, and New York and all the ones listening. Thank you so much for your beautiful energy. It was so felt. When 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 the human healers get involved with this, it just is so extraordinary. Mm-hmm. It, they just it just feels it feels different and equally beautiful. But knowing it's grounded here in a body and being able to be shared through the ethers is uh, just so extraordinary and. It reminds us how powerful we really are. Even Michael and I were talking the other day about about acupuncture. He's an acupuncturist in Canada. And he was like, yes, I give distant acupuncture sessions all the time. You know, it's that, it's that idea of, well, we can do anything we want, actually. <laughs> when our heart is open, we can do and send anything we need. And that's for everyone listening, not just people who have signed up as a a healer and hangs a shingle out right now, this is every one of us and equally powerful in all ways, no matter where you are and what you do in life. You can close your eyes and focus your heart and send it anywhere and it will be felt and it will do what you intend it to do. And it's time for us to really remember this and remember how powerful and loving we truly can be and, and take ownership of this and assist with this with this project and claim who we are in the most beautiful ways. So I just thank all the healers for helping us remember who we are and sharing it with each other. Thank you, Catherine, so much. Oh, thank you, Meg. And thank you for reminding us of that. Yes, we can all do this, and we can do it in any way we decide that we're going to be effective. So, well, that was quite an interesting time. Thank you, Sananda. Thank you, Arcturians. Thank you, Mother, Father, God, Saint Germain, Raphael, Archangel Michael, Hilarion, <laughs> Metatron, all all of our wonderful masters and healers, and everybody I didn't mention. <laughs> And thank you, the group that's here, for adding your energy. It was delightful. And so I would love to hear from those who had healing sessions today, um, either the ones we mentioned or others. Please write to us. Um, You can send your, you can go to the Facebook page and log in to the Healing for Ascension Tour. Or join the Healing for Ascension Tour group, which is quite a treat. And we have um, now almost 12,000 people on that, in that conversation. And it is fascinating how they're able to make contact and, and get to know each other and make connections all over the world. People who would never have been able to meet each other before and we have we're witness to that with the people who are here today who have all met each other before they came on Facebook so yeah so join the join the fun join the group also you can go to my website who needs org to read the messages today um I meant to to get the um, conference call hooked up. I didn't. I wasn't able to do that. But we have the archive for this session, and the next few days I'll be channeling a message every day, and I'm going to do that on Blog Talk Radio, and I will also set up a conference call to go with it, so that you can either call in on the conference line to hear it, or you can, if you don't have a computer, you can listen on the telephone. If you can go to your internet, you can listen to it on Blog Talk Radio. So I'll be doing a a channeling session every day at 5 o'clock Eastern Time. 
<laughs> the group is all smiling. They didn't know this. <laughs> so we will do a channeling session together every afternoon until the RV. <laughs> Okay. All right. There's lots of laughs here. So thank you, Meg. And if you will put on our beautiful music, we will say so long for today. And we will talk to everyone again tomorrow. (laughs) Yes. Goodbye, Catherine. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Big family and the truth, you know love.